Do you remember that US Airways pilot who made an emergency landing on the Hudson River? They called it the miracle on the Hudson. After hitting a flock of geese, the plane lost both of its engines and the pilot was forced to glide the plane down onto the surface of the river. And not a single person was lost. The media and all the experts praised the pilot's abilities to execute such a challenging maneuver. What wasn't always reported is that the pilot, in addition to being a former fighter pilot and an expert in aviation safety, was also a certified glider pilot. It may very well have been that hobby which prepared him for that fateful moment over the Hudson. But I imagine he probably never thought that all those days training in a glider would one day save his life and hundreds more. Who would have thought that it was all a long preparation for one of his life's biggest moments? Most people are familiar with the story of David and Goliath. The image of Goliath is fixed in our cultural imagination. A giant towering over his opponents, beating his sword against his shield as he mocked the terrified Israelites hiding behind rocks. Before the legendary Goliath, no one felt prepared to challenge him. It's to our surprise, as much as theirs, that David was the lone figure willing to take on the challenge. David wasn't a soldier, nor did he have any training or experience on the battlefield. He was a shepherd, a marginalized and overlooked position of necessity, not honor. But David was somehow confident when others were not. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. That's not exactly a resume for battlefield success. Desperate for anyone to fight, King Saul accepted, but insisted that David wear his royal armor. Saul reacts like we usually do. If you're going to take on something you're seemingly unprepared for, you better at least look the part. David wasn't a soldier, though maybe he could at least look like one. But David refused. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. David refused to face Goliath as anything other than what he was. There was no pretending, no pretense, no artificial swagger. He was only what he already knew. David explained, When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. What David realized was that his overlooked time as a shepherd, guarding helpless sheep, was actually a critical part of his preparation for just this moment. God had prepared him against lions and bears to now stand with confidence against Goliath. While David's brothers had been off attempting to earn their reputation and honor on the battlefield, David had been content with the work before him, sheep. How many nights had he slept alone in that wilderness, surrounded by only the stars and his sheep? There was no battlefield glory in being alone. Yet it wasn't wasted time. It had been a long preparation, preparing not only his skills for defense, but also his trust and faith in God. Suddenly flooded by those pastoral memories, the feel of the sling in his hand, the weight of those five smooth stones in his bag, the mighty Goliath suddenly appeared smaller, like one of those bears standing on his back two legs, his curses and wagging head like the lion's roar and tossing mane. What was one more bear, one more lion? David 
was prepared for just this moment. Or as David put it, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Do you think David, years before, sitting alone in some quiet pasture, watching those helpless sheep chew grass, pick at bushes, bored by the routine of it all, do you think he could have ever realized how much that preparation would one day matter? Probably not, but God knew and was preparing him even as he daydreamed of far more adventurous places. There are preparations happening that you can't fully recognize. There are lessons you're learning which you couldn't have planned. Your boredom and the restlessness you feel is not the final meaning of this moment. David reminds us that we all have a shepherd who is guiding and leading us. By his lead, every day is a preparation for those days waiting just ahead of us.